so our first um, speaker uh, today is going to be Maxime Jeffs, who's going to tell us about mirror symmetry in Fukaya categories of singular varieties. Please take okay. it away. Yeah, uh, thank you for the invitation. Um, hang on, let me share my screen. Uh, is, that, is that visible? Fantastic. So please let me know if there are any technical problems. You can't hear me or my screen freezes or something to that effect. So I can't really see the chat. So if there are any questions in the chat, please let me know. Um, I'm sorry about that. Okay, so um, yeah, uh, as Danny said, I'll be talking about mirror symmetry and the higher categories of singular varieties. So here's a bit of an overview of what we're going to be talking about. So I'm going to start off with an overview of uh, De definition of the Fukai category of, uh, of a singular hypersurface, what's the motivation and some examples, then I'll talk about two results about this, about this definition. First one's a narrow periodicity theorem, and the second one is a mirror symmetry equivalence of the large complex structure limits. Okay, so first off, some, some background or motivation about why one might care about this question. So recall, or maybe this is the first time you've seen this, so homological mirror symmetry relates the Fukai category of some Kähler manifold to the coherent sheaves on the mirror. Okay, uh, so what's the problem with this? Well, there are, there are many problems with this. And one of them is that it's very hard to construct these mirrors and sometimes it's impossible. But one of the, one of the main problems or one of the serious problems is that um, even uh, the mirrors of smooth varieties are often singular, and then it's uh, difficult to make sense of the A model in this case. So it's difficult to make sense of the Fukai category of a singular variety. Um, so uh, one example is some of the basic building blocks for gluing approaches to homological mirror symmetry. So the basic example is, is this sort of pair of pants. So even in the simplest case of a pair of pants, mirror to this, or at least one mirror to this, and I'll explain in what sense I mean that later on, is this nodal conic, um, which is one example of a singular hypersurface for which we don't already have a definition of the Fukai category of this thing. Um, so that's one instance of why we might care about this. Um, and more generally, uh, given some mirror construction, we expect homological mirror symmetry to be an evolution. So that is, we should be able to start from the Fukai category of this guy of the singular of the singular hypersurface, and then manage to go back again to the other side. So um, therefore, there, there's kind of a need for the notion of the Fukai category of singular varieties. So that's maybe one one motivation for why one might consider this question. Um, so in this case, I'm going to focus on hypersurfaces and complete intersections. So um, why is this? So in general, one expects, given a singular variety, that one needs some kind of extra data. And I'll talk a bit more later about what this extra data might be. So you might need some kind of extra data in order to define its Fukai category. Um, but this is, this is difficult to understand directly, though I'll, I'll say a bit more about this later on. Um, but hypersurfaces, so they have this nice property that they have smoothings. And um, this smoothing of this hypersurface, oh wait, can you, can you still hear me? Um, the smoothing of the hypersurface um, has a Fukai category. So this nearby fiber is in possession of a Fukai category. So this, this nodal conic example, which will carry on throughout, here we go, we, we have this smoothing, which is given by this cylinder, the C star squared, and this, this guy does have a Fukai category. And moreover, this Fukai category comes with some extra data. So not only is there a monodromy natural transformation around the singular fiber, but there's also some extra symplectic data associated to this, which is what's called Seidel's natural transformation, which is roughly speaking, some count of holomorphic curves uh, lying uh, that are sections of this vibration. Um, so I'll say more about this shortly. And then the idea is that motivated by theorems uh, in terms of cohomology, the idea is that we sort of localize this natural transformation, whatever that means. Um, so some kind of algebraic procedure with respect to this natural transformation uh, in order to obtain the kind of category of the singular fiber. 
So I'll, I'll now be a bit more precise about what this means and how we go about constructing this. So just a quick overview or summary of the uh, notion of partially wrapped Foucault categories. So if X is some Liouville manifold and I have some closed subset of its boundary infinity, uh, which we call the stop. Um, so an example might be something, so kind of imagine it looking something like this. So I have my disk and then kind of at infinity, I have a point sitting along the boundary infinity, which I call the stop. So that's, that's kind of how you might imagine it. And this is sort of how you can think about it as we, as we go on. So then uh, there are several, I work by several people on defining a, a category, uh, which I'm gonna denote uh, the wrap for K category of X with respect to F. So the objects are suitably nice uh, Lagrangian submanifolds. So they can be non-compact, but they must avoid F. So they might look something like this. Um, and the morphisms are going to be intersections between the Lagrangians as in a usual Foucault category, but we allow certain sort of non-compact morphisms as well, which are given by rep chords going in a positive direction around infinity uh, so that they avoid the stop. So this is roughly speaking, so really correctly, we should use some kind of localization procedure. So what do we mean by localization? So the idea is that we invert some morphisms in the category to produce a new category in which those, those are, which those morphisms are invertible. Um, so that's the idea of how you do this. And so that's, we'll, we'll see a bit more about this localization procedure later on. So this, this was done by uh, Lyubashenko of Sienko who gave a definition of what it means to localize a, uh, an A infinity category to give you another A infinity category. So there's a very explicit method for how you do this. Um, so a particular case we'll be interested in, so given some, some symplectic vibration of a C, we can define what I'm gonna write as uh, W of X with respect to F, is gonna be the partially wrapped for Kaya category stopped along the fiber at negative infinity. So if you imagine X lying over C here, and I'm gonna take this fiber over my infinity of F, sort of lying over here, and I'm gonna take that to be my stop, okay? And then I can imagine my sort of Lagrangian sort of living, living over C, but avoiding this fiber of the negative infinity. Okay. So that's an overview of partially wrapped Foucault categories. And on these partially wrapped Foucault categories, we have certain functors called the cap and cup functors. Um, so given this level hypersurface in the boundary, you can take these small linking disks. So what are these? So going back to my picture before, here's my Here's my disk, sorry, here's my, um, here's my little heuristic picture of a, of a level manifold. And then I can take, roughly speaking, a small disk, which looks like this, which sort of links the stop. So there's a, a more precise definition, but in the case of, um, in the case of a, um, oh gosh, uh, Sorry, my, my headphones, I guess, are not. Yeah, I wonder if you're hitting the mic when you're, when you're writing. Um, is, that, is that any better? Is there any way to move your mic closer to your mouth or away from Oh, okay, like, like this? Is that better? Oh, I see, it's, it's like attached to that. Um, yeah, maybe some of the movement is causing uh, a little bit of muffled noises. Oh, okay. Duct, duct tape. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, is, it, is it still comprehensible or is it, uh, should no, I? No, it's good. Yeah, it's okay. really good if you hold it. Okay, well, I'll, just, I'll just keep holding it like this. Um, I can just write with my other hand. <laughs> yeah, okay. So uh, should I repeat something? If it wasn't comprehensible, should I, should I go back a bit? No, one could understand it, uh, but it was a little bit annoying with this background noise. Uh huh. Okay, sure. Well, if it if it gets bad again, please let me know. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, as I was saying, in the case where we have um, the wrapped Foucault category of X with respect to this superpotential F, then what we do is we literally take the the parallel transport of a certain Lagrangian in the fiber 
over negative infinity around this stop, around this fiber in negative infinity. And I, unfortunately, I've drawn it on the wrong side here, but you can get the idea. Um, so we can define kind of formally an adjoint functor, which we call cap. So what what does what does this do? So maybe um, sorry, Maxim. The, what was on the wrong side? What, what did he do on the wrong side? Oh, sorry, sorry. My my picture was supposed to be flipped. Oh, so my what? picture was supposed to be over here, and this Lagrangian was supposed to live over here, fine, like fine. so. Whoops, like so. Yep. Okay. So then the, the cap functor you can think of is taking my Lagrangian submanifold and then taking its fiber or taking its intersection with a general fiber. Okay, and that lands us from the, the wrapped Foucault category of X with respect to F in the wrapped Foucault category of the fiber. Okay, and these are a pair of adjoint functors. And so one sort of formally gets this exact triangle of functors. Uh, so given by the taking the cone of the unit of the adjunction, but you can think of this as kind of being a, a formal consequence of the existence of an adjunction um, where this, this, this natural transformation S uh, is Seidel's natural transformation and mu is the monodromy around the boundary of infinity applied to the wrapped Foucault category of the fiber. So this is a result of Abu Zaid Ganatra. Okay. So what is a ruse definition? So given some, some family X over C with precisely one singular fiber and the singular fiber lying over zero is the one we want to define the, the wrapped Foucault category of, then the wrapped Foucault category is the localization of the wrapped Foucault category of this nearby fiber, which is smooth at the natural transformation S. So I've formally written it like this. So again, you can think of this as kind of uh, inverting the monodromy in some sense or passing to the monodromy invariance. And this is equivalent by uh, an algebraic argument to quotienting by the image of the cap functor. So you can think of this as it's equivalent to killing the vanishing cycles. Um, okay, so that's the, that's the definition. And so um, I guess there's a simple example which is of this nodal conic, which looks something like this. Um, so the nearby fiber is going to be this C star, C star, and it's the vanishing cycle in this family is going to be this equatorial S1. And then when, when I kill this, so in the mirror, this corresponds to a single point inside C star, say this point is one, and so when I quotient by this vanishing cycle in order to pass to the Foucault category, the singular fiber, this corresponds to killing the point or the, the skyscraper sheaf of the point one, it's C star. And so this gives us a mirror equivalence between the Foucault category of the singular fiber corresponding to the, the coherent sheaves on the pair of pants, which is precisely what we, what we wanted in our, in our motivation uh, section. Okay, so what I did here is I, I took this smoothing family, I looked at the Foucault category of the nearby fiber, I looked at the vanishing cycles, namely the image of cap, the cap functor, I quotiented by that to get the Foucault category of the singular fiber, and then on the mirror side that corresponded to removing the point one in C star to get the pair of pants. Okay, and this is an example of something more general, we'll see later on. Okay, so I want to advertise some properties of this definition. Um, so as you've seen, it works in a number of simple examples and one can compute it explicitly. So then I'll, I'll explain these, these two theorems as well, which is the, uh, the sort of good properties of this definition. Um, it also has some other nice properties as well. So there's this heuristic that, mirror, that the mirror to smoothing is compactification, and this sort of makes this precise. There's also um, a number of other relationships to other symplectic uh, constructions like Lagrangian cobordism gives potentially interesting invariants of hypersurface singularities. And there are also generalizations to complete intersections. Okay, so uh, I might say a word about some of these later on, uh, but those are some of the desirable features of this definition. And now I'll focus on two of them in particular. So the first one is 
uh, an analog of the neuroperiodicity theorem. So for derived categories of coherent sheaves, there's this theorem of all of, so that if X is some variety and F is a regular function, then there's an equivalence between the derived category of coherent sheaves on this hypersurface and the uh, derived category of singularities and matrix factorizations on X times C with potential given by ZF. Uh, where z is this coordinate on c. So the important feature of this is that x is smooth even when f inverse of zero isn't. So this could potentially be a singular hypersurface, whereas this is a regular function on a smooth variety. So one might try to turn this into a definition of the Foucault category of the singular variety, say that the Foucault category of this singular variety, f inverse of zero, is given by the, the wrapped Foucault category of X times C relative to ZF. And so in fact, there's already some work by Nadler which uses this definition in terms of microlocal sheaves to uh, compute mirrors to pairs of pants. So the main result is the following theorem that actually these two definitions or these uh, supposed definitions are actually equivalent. So if I have some regular function, uh, on a Stein manifold with this singular critical fiber, then actually these two definitions are quasi equivalent. So the first being a ruse category, and the second one being this, this all of suspension or this all of category. And then, so maybe some of the, the ongoing work on generalizations is there are similar results for the relative case and for complete intersections on the on the B side. And so one could one could hope that these also hold for uh, for Kaya categories. So namely, if the singular variety carries a super potential, carries some some other regular function, or I'm looking at a, a complete intersection, that I can also do do similar things. And these are these are work in progress. Okay, so this is this is the main idea of the derived narrow periodicity theorem for uh, for Kaya categories. Um, I want to say just one word about the proof, and so it goes via the equivalence in it in the smooth case. So one passes essentially to a smoothing um, where this equivalence is is known for smooth hypersurfaces by work of Abuzaida Rukatsakov, though not for wrapped categories. And then one tries to localize both sides with respect to a certain, a certain well, on one side, the, the uh, cones, uh, the, the, the natural transformation, on the other side, uh, quotient by a collection of certain objects. So that's, that's the sort of very rough idea of the proof in this case. Um, so I'll move on to, um, to the other main result. So, I should say that um, some of you may have noticed that the wrap Foucault category depends on the choice of smoothing. So actually, this is precisely what one wants from a mirror symmetry perspective. Sorry, was that? Okay, sorry, can, can you still hear me? Okay, great. Um, yeah, so, so, it, so I just want to say something about this. Namely, that one expects that one either needs a log structure on the singular fiber or something like a minus one shifted symplectic structure on the singular fiber in order to define the Foucault category. And so there are various approaches to doing this, either using, say, say Parker's theory of holomorphic curves and exploded manifolds or Joyce's theory of deep critical loci. So those are some, again, some further directions. So uh, I think I'll, I'll just say one word about this is that, in fact, on the B side, it's well known that localizing corresponds to passing to the complement of a divisor. So namely, localizing with respect to a section of a line bundle gives you the derived category of coherent sheaves on the complement of the zeros of that section. So this is what this, I guess it's a bit silly calling it a theorem because it's more of a proposition. And this is what allows us to, to prove the main the main result here, namely that if I have a mirror pair coming from a pair of integral affine manifolds without singularities, and assuming that you have a homologic, uh, sorry, 
assuming that I have a homological mirror symmetry equivalence with certain properties, so namely those, uh, whoops, is there, is there something going wrong with my, okay. Assuming there's some homological mirror symmetry equivalence that has the properties given by Abazide gross siebert and, uh, and uh, family floor theory, then one has an equivalence between the Fukai category of the large complex structure limit and on the other side, the large volume limit, namely the complement of a certain uh, divisor inside the mirror X check. Okay, so I think I'll stop there. Uh, thank you for, for listening. Thank you very much. Let's, let's thank uh, Maxine. Um, so, yeah, if there's any questions, please go ahead. Um, so, so you, you, this, this definition seems to make sense uh, completely in the spherical functor setting, right? When you look at this transformation from identity. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's, that's right, Bash. You can, you could do the same thing in just a complete generality for, for spherical functors. I see. So is there a stabilization like some Orlov theorem in a complete abstract setting or, or do you expect it? I mean, I'm not quite sure what that would mean. I mean, the categories are equivalent. I mean, abstractly, they're the same category. No, so I mean, not... like what I mean is that, that I, uh, like for instance, this is the geometric thing, right? X cross the pair X cross C comma ZF. Like, is there, there is there an entirely abstract way of obtaining that from the spherical functor? Um, I, I, I wouldn't think so. I mean, the proof involves doing some, you know, one really needs to think about the geometry of X times C and ZF. So I'm not sure there's some kind of purely abstract interpretation of this. Uh -huh. I see. I see. Maybe you can elaborate in this uh, basic example which you showed, passing from corn to the corn. Uh, oh, yeah, so yeah, of, of yeah, course. So why my question is the following. So why removing the vanishing cycle is equivalent to, to removing point from his star? Ah, okay, yeah, that's that's a great point. And the, the reason is this theorem here. So when I localize by this natural transformation, uh, it's equivalent to, to passing to the complement of the divisor. So in other words, quotienting by the skyscraper sheaf of a point is equivalent to passing to the complement of that point in terms of categories of coherent sheaves. Yeah, so if I kill the skyscraper sheaf of a point, I, or I quotient by that in the category, I get the derived category of the complement of that point. So that's this is why why this why this argument works because in some sense when I quotient by this object which is mirrored to the skyscraper sheaf at one the corresponding category when I quotient by that object on the other side uh, gives gives me um, what happens if I take the complement of that point in C star does does that make sense? What, what happens if you have, uh, if you if you take a leftist vibration with multiple singular fibers, what does this abstract thing give you? Or do you have a Nerder type theorem? Um, yeah, so I guess when you have multiple singular fibers, um, I guess what you can think about the definition giving you is the, the Foucault category of the singular fiber where you pushed all of the singularities together into one fiber. Mm -hmm. And can you always do that? Uh, I mean, 
not necessarily, I don't think, but um, I guess that's how you could think about it if you wanted to. I'm not sure whether it gives you anything. Okay, well, I'm, I'm sorry to cut the conversation short, but maybe we can postpone uh, further discussion until later and uh, move on to our next talk. So if we would uh, thank uh, Maxime again for her talk.